taking control against our ptosis debate and oh, keep going back and forth. That'll be easy. What's up, guys? It is July at 19th, and this is the State of the Game. I'm your host, J.P. McDaniel. We have uh, our usual guest, or I guess host today, except for Sean. He's sick. Um, sh should I tell him how sick he is, or should I just leave that? Okay. T he'll probably tell you about it on a daily eventually. Uh, but he's very sick right now, so please get well, Sean, because uh, I don't want to get sick next week at MLG. Um, but anyways, also we've got Artosis. What's going on, Dan? Uh, not much, man. I'm happy I'm not sick like Sean. I'm happy to be here, and I cannot wait to see what FXO Boss has to say about Foyu. Hi. Are you gonna <laughs> Are you gonna see that or what? Huh? Are you gonna see what I have to say, say or? Yeah, man. I have you on webcam. Yeah, yeah you're on webcam. Your, <laughs> I read lips. <laughs> <laughs> also got Tyler, aka Liquid Noni, or Liquid Tyler rather, not Noni. AKA, AKA Noni, but anyways, Tyler, what's going on? What's up, man? Uh, I'm really excited about the show tonight. And last but not <laughs> least, we have Leah B. Jackson. What's going on? Hey, guys. And of course, uh, Artosis mentioned Boss, AKA the manager of FXO, also known as the Boss, I guess. Wait, what's your real name, Boss, or should we, should we just Josh. call you Boss? Wh My which name's do you Josh. Josh or Boss? You can call me whatever you like, really. It doesn't make a difference. All right. Uh, I don't have a makeup <laughs> name for you, so I'll just call you Josh for now on. But yeah. before we even like, jump into this, um, why don't you kind of tell people, uh, in case they don't actually know what happened, uh, what you recently announced as FXO? Uh, that we've acquired Foyu, the, the team. <laughs> Short and sweet. Well, yeah. first question I got is, is why Foyu? Um... See, I knew that question would come up, like, just in general throughout the community. And it has a lot to do with our relationship with them. Like, it was just a situation where something came to my table that was too good to pass up. It, it wasn't a matter of me shopping around, you know, seeing who's, who's around and out there. Uh, Choya, originally, I was just sending Choya to MLG. And that was just the gesture of mine, you know, to say thank you for practicing with us and stuff. And then I think it was the second last night I was in Korea, he came to me with this with this deal that he was looking to do. And it was just too good for me to say no. So, I mean, what do you gain from this sponsorship? With your current FXO team, or I guess the, the international team, what is the official name of, of FXO? prior to FOU now that you do you have one or is it just FXO? It's just FXO. Um, the only difference between the two teams are the management side of it. Uh, Choya keeps the, he, managing. Mm -hmm. uh, I just provide him financials for the team. Are um, you are you going to see any or excuse me are we going to see any FOU produced content like you're doing with your other team? Yeah, yeah, they're starting streaming next week, I believe. Awesome. Um, a lot of people, is that going to be on Justin TV or where can people look uh, for that? Yeah, that'll be on Justin TV. Um, we've just created the Team Liquid accounts. Uh, we've got our Inside FXO show, which has had, already had Choya, Lucky, Sirius, and SC, I think, on it. Um, then we have SC, The Best, Lenox. Choya and another one do, doing their own individual stream and then they'll have a team stream as well where they'll interchange who's who's playing on the stream. Awesome. Well, I know a lot of fans are going to be looking forward to that. Uh, what exactly does the sponsorship entail? What are these players going to be getting from you? Okay. Um, j initially, like, it, it'll change every three months uh, based on results so 
right now we just have like a simple contract that we do this for you and this for you. So we're paying the expenses of the house, plus we're going to be sending two players, which are through individual ranks, two players to international competitions, providing they want it. Like if if everyone's in GSL, they're not probably not going to want it, so we won't you know send them. If they want it, we'll send them. At the same time, if someone's doing really good but isn't the top two in the internal rankings, I'll probably send them as well with them. Like I, I'm quite uh, open-minded about how I go about these types of things, but I've guaranteed them two people um, going to international events like MLG and whatnot. Well, that kind of had to do with my next question, so we'll just skip on to the next one. Is this going to have any effect on, um, I guess, the old team of FXO? Or are you going to cut any players due to salary caps or anything like that, or are you just going to leave the team the way it is? Uh, it's not. It, it, it's going to stay the same. Um, there are a few things going on in the background at the moment that I can't mention at the moment. Uh, we're not making any difference. in it. Like We're not forcing the team to be different, but... Mm. Uh, the practice schedule gets increased. There are a few more little commitments that might need to be made by players. Um, it, we we don't plan on getting rid of the international team. Mm -hmm. uh, w the reason we're doing this is to be international. It's not to say, okay, well, you know, since we've only got people from outside of Korea, then we can't have Koreans in the team. That's that's just ridiculous. We've basically got a bunch of people who require the practice together from an international perspective we brought them together and hopefully they'll grow together so what does this mean for the gsl team of course phil you uh or gstl excuse me did quite well in that league uh, you guys had your own team in there with a bunch of foreigners on it is it just simply going to be ff fxo korea now playing in the gstl it'll just be fxo like there's no okay so that are the two teams going to merge in that sense yeah, Choya made a, a little bit of a mistake in his interview. It, it's not FXO Korea. It's FXO's Korea division. Okay. It's, it it's, hasn't got a different label, just a different management. The deal we have is that we do internal rankings throughout both teams together. It becomes one team. And if someone in the international team is good enough, the bench for GSTL, for sure. I, I, will, I will make sure that if if that arises, they will for sure be there. Uh, unless, of course, they've got other commitments like QXC has school coming up, Moonen has school mm -hmm. coming up. So they might not be able to make it. But I will do... If the players are playing well enough, you will see them in GSTL, for sure. And the last question that I have is, is anything going to change in the day-to-day -day operations of FOU? Um, for them, it gets better. Well, them for us, I, it's <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it, it gets better in the sense that they don't have the financial stress anymore. Um, there are people like Choya, for instance. He had a lot on his plate before this happened. He he was struggling. He was stressed out, and this is simply just providing him a means now he can actually sit down, seriously coach, seriously practice. Uh, it gives them abil the ability to focus more and not have to worry about you know where are they going to eat in the morning or you know yeah it just makes life easier for them. Cool. Well, that's all I got, Leah. I know you had some questions for him as well. Um, I just wanted to know what does that what does this whole thing mean for the player Oz or Twilight? Will he be going to the Korean division or is he going to be staying with the foreigner division? But it's the same. It's the same team. Like he'll have the choice where he wants to stay. Uh, as far as I know, he wants to come here to Malaysia. Um, I'll have to like he'll he. The due date for him to come to Malaysia was the end of August. I will talk to him and see what he wants. Whether he wants to stay in Korea, that's fine by me. Or he wants to come to Malaysia and practice. Uh, I think he's pretty keen on Malaysia at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, there, there's a bunch of the the ex you guys who are interested in Malaysia as well. So, I'm more than happy to house them here as well. There's no lag to Korea, so they can still practice and everything. And then they get access to the, like the online tournaments uh, abroad. So it, it just makes it easier for them to participate globally. 
Which, which scene would you say uh, your your players are benefiting the most from? Like, do you do you think they benefit the most from being in Korea? Like, uh, I mean, obviously, but how how much do you think your players will benefit from being in Malaysia and Korea, and then compared to North America? Um, I mean, that's it's a hard thing to gauge. the The thing that I have noticed the most about my players is they've had the realization that there is life above the the skill cap what that is North America and Europe like for instance QXC in on ladder in North America he'll hardly ever lose he goes to Korea and it's like a complete shock that he's getting smashed every second every third game it's 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 actually a good way to bring people down to a level where they can actually improve rather than you know think you know I'm great I'm wonderful. I'm I'm content to win these online tournaments and whatnot. This is like QXC said to us the other day that after losing in this his second appearance in GSTL, he went back to the Gom House and he realized, you know, people are really good. I have to work harder to reach that level. I have to push to get there. So these sorts of realizations is is what makes Korea great. You would not particularly have the same realization from being in North America or or Europe because they're on that same level. So, I mean, the mentality has changed, um, which is great for me. I, it makes managing a team better. They're more professional, and to me, that just says that they're going to be more successful in the future. Tyler, okay. Dan, do you guys have any questions? Uh, <clears throat> not really. I think he summed it all up there. <laughs> Tyler? I I vaguely remember there being some discussion about uh, maybe FXO as a team being a team that could benefit a lot, at least the foreigners, from a sports psychologist kind of angle. Have you considered maybe not bringing in a professional, but any kind of like conscious effort to get like a good professional kind of athletic psych you know psychological state going for your team or do you kind of just you know see if any problems arise and fix them as they come um like i i remember the post you're talking about i think i did respond to it it might be necessary at one at some stage um the issue is that everyone is different so you would need a, a specialist in that area, and at the time, like, it's it's not in the budget to to be paying a professional for that. But if issues specifically arise, we will most probably fix that, like with a professional. Uh, at, for now, I think it's pretty much done. Everyone's everyone's pretty good mentally, so uh, I don't think it's necessary right now. Yeah, I definitely think one of the the greatest advantages to having a team house is getting a nice psychological, uh, you know, competitive culture going. Everyone knows they need to work hard and everyone's in it together kind of thing. So it's real important to uh, keep that going, keep a good culture in the house. Not, I don't know any de details of the FXO house. I'm just saying as, as FXO is one of the first teams to get a house going, I'd like to see you guys benefit in every way possible. I agree 100%. Yeah, sure. It, it makes a com very big difference in, in mentality, competitiveness, uh, the way people think about the game and, and whatnot. The uh, last question I've got for you is, when are we going to see uh, some FXO, notably the Korean players, come over to an event, uh, possibly like MLG Raleigh or anything like that? And how many of them are you going to be sending? Well, we have Choya going to... Did he mute his mic? Or is he cut down? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I accidentally <laughs> muted it. <laughs> it's all right. Pulling a, pulling a Dan. You can talk to our yeah, yeah. I've later. been up since 3 a.m., so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit shaky at the moment. But, yeah, um, Choya is going to Anaheim, coincidentally. Uh, and then there will be two players from the X4U, possibly at 
rally depending on the GSL schedule. Okay. Cool. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm trying to get them out there as much as possible. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'm out of questions. That Leah or Tyler or Tosi's guys got anything else? No, nope, I'm good. Thanks nope. for coming on. Yeah, thanks no for coming on, Josh. Uh, you got any shout outs you want to do before we let you go? Uh, right now, I got a shout out to NDL community in Malaysia. It's a StarCraft community here. They've been keeping me company for a few days now. I'm, I'm very proud of them. Uh, and the pro team in Malaysia as well, uh, with Timber and Kobo and whatnot. Because I'm actually st about to start a Malaysian league, so. Cool. Who are going to follow us for that? <clears throat> well, also remember to check out uh, the FXO Twitter, which you could find right below uh, Josh's face right now. Go follow that. You can get all the updates on the uh, the team, and I'm sure there's going to be some more information coming out about the uh, Korean aspect of, of FXO. And uh, congrats as well on the new acquisition. I know a lot of people are going to be looking forward to seeing some of those players and watching you guys in GSL. So, Josh, thanks for coming on, man. No problem. We'll see you, uh, I guess, in Raleigh, since you said you're not coming to Anaheim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right, later, man. We'll talk to you later. All right, Hello. have fun, guys. Cool. All right, so let's see. I guess in the, the same vein, we could talk about Nada slash MC going to SK, kind of like uh, that sponsorship is kind of weird. I don't. Is it even a sponsorship? What? What? Would you guys qualify it as that? Isn't that all it is? Yeah. yeah. I think that's all <laughs> well, it's just like, all they're doing is just paying for flights to the foreign events, right? That's all it is. Well, it's it's not. I mean, it's the entire travel, right, of the foreign event plus management there for them. Am I wrong on that? Or I I'm not too I, sure. I think that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, what what do you guys think about this, Dan? Is this going to be something that a lot more teams are going to be doing now for yeah, some of the Korean teams? I, <clears throat> I think so. Uh, why wouldn't you? I mean. MC, he flies to an event, he's probably going to win it. So <laughs> for them to pay for that, and I know that particularly SK has a completely bilingual manager. Mm -hmm. So, you, I mean, if you have that working for you and you can do something like that, I think it's obviously quite smart. Tyler, you guys, when, when I say you guys, Team Liquid kind of started this with OGS as well. Um, mm -hmm. Is this, as far as you know, going to affect the relationship between uh, OGS and Team Liquid at all? I doubt it'll have any negative effects. I, I don't think there's really any overlapping territory. Oh. Uh, are they wearing uh, just an SK logo, or are they going to wear the entire SK? Oh, yeah, that's form? some some overlapping territory, actually. Yeah, because there's like, what MC about the Team Liquid, Liquid, logo? Liquid logo? Yeah. So how many team logos is this kid going to actually have <laughs> on his shirt? Man? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but I I don't know the details on that. I guess we'll see. I mean, the first event was not a going to assembly, I think, right? They haven't announced any other travel plans for, for Nada and MC, that, as far as we know. So I guess we'll see what happens when that event pops up. Um, but do you guys have anything else to, to say about that, other than it's probably a, a good thing for everyone in, in the StarCraft II community that the players are going to be going out outside of Korea more often? I mean, it's, it's good, but like I already s there's a lot of players that I'd like to see travel internationally and they don't and I just assume it's because their teams can't afford it so like who uh, give me some names <laughs> I don't think like well I mean when you look at a, a tournament like DreamHack I don't think North America sends its best lineup and so you just gotta wonder you know look at who the better players would have been and ask why didn't they go and the answer is probably because their team wasn't willing to pay for it, so I think I mean, that's kind of true as well for Europeans know coming to MLG. But yeah, I mean it kind of goes both ways. Like even the best teams aren't able to just fly their players across oceans whenever they want to. So as nice as it would be to be represented by a Korean who's likely to you know get on the podium, it doesn't mean like you're going to spend two thousand dollars to fly him to the tournament and automatically get all this exposure because you right. don't have the two thousand dollars <laughs> like yeah i don't know teams teams just need to get uh, a little more money going and they can start flying people around more do you guys do you, do you think ahead, that yeah. this will make do you guys think that this will make more teams wanting to just 
buy out the yeah. Koreans instead oh, yeah. of Are we going to have a Yankees a... coming to <laughs> Yeah, e-sports? like our, yeah. I mean, EG's like, kind of there already, right? I guess they don't have well, any Koreans yet, but... I mean, but they uh, could. That's the thing. Like, instead no. of getting new players, are they going to get Koreans? It, it becomes more rough. I mean, there's there are things being set up in Korea. A lot of these players are already contracted to their teams. And, right. you know, the sad reality of that is a lot of them are contracted to their teams with no salary. It's like there are players over here that can fly over and win an MLG, and they make zero dollars, and that's it. And there's like yeah, everyone and their mother has a, some sort of sponsorship in StarCraft II in the foreigner world. You know, everyone's making, you know, 200, 300 so, I mean, while a lot of these Koreans may or may not want to do that, a lot of them are already contracted, especially the high up ones. Right. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll have to see what happens in the future with some more of these deals possibly popping up. But uh, before we jump into some of the other stuff um, that we're going to talk about on the show, it's been a week. So what have you guys been up to? Tyler, I know you started streaming again. You showed everyone the yep. wonder that is the 15th century push. <laughs> What else you been up to? It's nice. Well, I had some other uh, hijinks on my stream, actually. I was trying to do, like, new strats for every game, so I had some nice uh, uh, Speed Warp Prism and Mortal Harass for some PVTs and uh, my High Templar build for PVZs and for PVP, trying to get Zealot Archon as my main composition as early as possible and seeing how well that can work. So my stream's have been a pretty happening place, <laughs> I must say. And we have very pretty overlays now. Yeah, all, all the Team, Team Liquid, Liquid has Those very nice sweet. overlays. So looks real nice, sound is nice. Uh, so yeah, check out my stream. I haven't been up to much else. I mean, I know you Anaheim's were getting to go up. see Harry Potter on Friday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Harry Potter was real good, man. If no spoilers. I haven't, I haven't, seen, I haven't it yet. seen it yeah. yet. I'm going to go see it okay. next week in California. So. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty nice. I saw it IMAX 3D. 3D was pretty well done, I thought. Really? So. What What are you... Th- <laughs> do you like 3D, Tyler? I can't stand it. But I think well, it's because I, mean, I wear glasses already, so I don't want to like, wear another uh, pair of glasses. Double glasses. <laughs> I mean, it depends on the movie. It's just another effect for the director to use, and he can do it poorly or he can do it well. Have, have you guys seen a 4D movie? That's like when you sit in the no, chairs, that's right? The, that's the, the one yeah. that shake. Yeah, yeah that's fun. those are fun. There's, one, there's those. one, Tyler. Yeah. There's one in, in San Antonio I know about. Yeah, I know. The Palladium has it. Yeah, yeah. What, what, it's called like... D-Box. D-Box, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it's <laughs> called. You have to see the right movie on it, but it can be really good. I saw like some movie about like a dragon and some kid who like... How to Train a <laughs> Dragon? Yeah, I'm like instantly you know what it is. <laughs> Dude, that movie's like good JP as shit. Is, <laughs> JP totally loves that movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, that movie. was like that's so that's good in 4D, too. though. I totally enjoyed it. I didn't huh. think you could see like normal movies in 4D. I thought it was just like theme park rides. Oh, no. No, no. Uh, yeah, they, a lot of movies. Real movies, yeah. Yeah, they like blow water in your face when they're flying over the water and wind. <laughs> Wait, and my what? chair rocks. And I'm like, I'm riding the dragon too. Even though I'm not even riding the dragon, guys. I just paid seventeen dollars for the movie ticket. That's all. <laughs> Tyler, real quick, back to uh, streaming. Are you? I'm, I yeah. mean, we're a week out now from Anaheim. Um, yeah. It, previously, you probably haven't streamed this close to an event simply because people might watch you if you're in a group. But you're in the open bracket this tournament. Are you just not worried at all about people kind of knowing what what you do build wise? Because you you have no idea who you're going to be playing against. Yeah, I'm not worried at all. I I mean I have some builds for each, each matchup specifically for the open open tournament and I mean the way you, the best way to play those kinds of games where you know you expect that you're the better player but you don't want to lose to something weird yeah is uh you need to have some aggression you need to put pressure on them but it needs to be safe like there's safe builds that sit back you know like passive safe builds and there's aggressive safe safe builds and if you have a aggressive safe build, then you're constantly giving yourself a chance to outplay the person. So you can like constantly poke them and harass them and stuff. And the idea is, even if it's not winning you the game, you're macroing well, and you have a game plan that's really nice to follow it up. Mm-hmm. And they're 
doing the typical newbie, I can't multitask, falling apart <laughs> kind of stuff, and then you just win. So I have kind of builds like that planned out where I get some pressure, but it's supposed to be safe, can't get caught, can't get hard countered, anything like that. So that's kind of how, how I play those games. And then like my real strats for like good opponents are different than what I'm streaming right now. And mostly the streaming games are practice for mechanics, really, not for strats. I'm pretty, I have some good strats planned, I think. All right. And uh, what is the, the stream link in case people want to go check you out? And in, if you have normal uh, times of your <coughs> streaming as well. Justin TV slash Liquid Tyler. And I normally start streaming around 4 p.m. Eastern. And I try to go till about 8 p.m. Eastern. That's 1 p.m. Pacific to 5 p.m. Pacific. So check me out. All right. Uh, Artosis, what have you been up to, mm. man? Uh, working, catch up on VODs, uh, doing a few things behind the scenes that can't really be talked about yet. But uh, haven't really had a lot of time to play recently. I'm finally going to be playing this weekend. I have a few days off, so... Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. All I all I do right now is watch VODs and and commentate. I've I've almost caught up on everything at this point. <laughs> Not quite, but I mean, there is so much out there to there's actually a, watch. There's a ton, man. I don't even know how you caught up because while you're catching up, well, there's like so much I, I stuff still happening. Some stuff, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I mean, it's it's on, man. I like watch it on my iPhone on the way to cast. I watch. I saw you're doing home. it when you're doing dishes the other yeah. day or something like that. Uh, seriously, I have like I just set shit up everywhere. If I have to sweep, man, I'm like I tape my iPhone <laughs> to my arm and like I'm sweeping while I'm watching it, and I just I'm trying to you know catch up, see exactly what everyone's doing, so that I can still you know know what's going on. I don't want to be one of these guys that doesn't know what's going on. So <laughs> I know a lot of people listening, as soon as you said you're going to start playing again, are going to be asking, are you going to start streaming again? I know you did that in the uh, past. Yeah, in a couple weeks, uh, probably, I'll start again. I, I'm going to be, like, really rusty. I haven't been able to play much in the last month. You know, I, I went to that MLG, and then I went to Cambodia for a week, and then I had to go to NASL. And every time I go to an event, it eats up at least a week of my time between jet lag and travel and being there. Mm-hmm. So I've just I've had this unbelievable schedule. Uh, so I'll be a little bit more rusty than usual. So I'm gonna hide that for now because there's there's too many flamers, man. I gotta I gotta yeah. got my yeah. mechanics a little bit. Then I'll definitely start streaming again. It's fun banning them though, don't don't you? Agree yeah, no, that? but I mean, <laughs> I I was to the point where you know you alt tab and it's like he got 800 minerals. I'm like, well, <laughs> guys, I. I had six gateways, six warp gates. I use them all at the same time. I'm going to have 800 minerals. So I have to ban and ban, and then I'm misclicking bans when we've said something That's nice. That's the worst when you ban somebody said something nice. It's, it's rough, man. It's a tough world out there. Yeah. You know, but uh, I don't really care. Uh, yeah, but it'll probably be, I, I want to say in two weeks, I will definitely be streaming again. Awesome. I know a lot of people will be looking forward to that. Yeah, a lot of people have been asking. Yep, yep. Leah, I heard you had a show match the other day against In Control's Mortal em- Enemy Total Biscuit. <laughs> yeah, uh, the first <laughs> game was good. The first game was good. I won. But What race do you play? I'm sorry. Terran. Okay, I haven't caught up on that match yet. <laughs> oh, the first one's <laughs> awesome. Uh, we've, we banked up to like 4,000 minerals each, not 800. So... Yeah, so that was good. We uh, it was a charity show match against me and Total Biscuit, and we raised a couple hundred dollars. So that was awesome. You got and any uh, esports or StarCraft two articles coming out on G four or that were out in the past week? Um, not this week. We are focusing on MLG though. We're gonna have a lot of really good MLG coverage um, happening on G four over the next week. But this week, it's been mostly focused on getting ready for Comic Con. Fun stuff. Art, Art, I'm going to run back to Artosis, and I'm just going to get this out of the way because hey. a ton of people are, are asking me, um, do you have anything to comment on about the whole Six Jacks major uh, controversy? I knew this would be <laughs> I, I mean, I have yeah. to, man. I don't want to like, yeah, throw you under no, the bus or anything, but I just threw you fine. under the bus. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, JP, I'm invincible. I can go under the bus. I'm fine. All right. I just play very still and very flat. Um, I turn my head to the side. I have kind of a big nose, but uh, <laughs> basically, okay, yeah, it's it's too bad. 
Uh, every time he does something well, bad, can, can I'm having serious... Can you explain the situation first? <laughs> okay, so, so don't really... he, he like, wanted to play a C tournament, C server. They said no, he complained about it, he smurfed in anyways, he got caught, uh, and then he called everyone dumb. You know, it's <laughs> it's the same old story <laughs> once again. Uh, <laughs> that's that's the truncated version. If you want to go through 66 pages of Team Liquid Threat, I'm sure you can get even more than that. But that shit was on uh, fire, man. Yeah. Let, uh, <sighs> let's just be honest here. He is a total kid. Uh, this is someone who... Uh, for all of his teenage years, basically, has been doing nothing but playing StarCraft. So uh, there's a big immaturity level there, and I understand that. I'm working with him on that. Uh, you know, I, I see a lot of myself in him in that way. A lot of these StarCraft two guys didn't really know who I was in StarCraft one. You can ask Tyler, man. I was I was a little prick in StarCraft one for years and years and years. It's like I had to grow up because you know that was uh, the time when you're supposed to grow up. I was playing StarCraft, so. Uh, I'm I'm helping along with that. I'm sorry he did it. Uh, after that talk I had with him, I think he's sorry he did it too. Uh, <laughs> is, is there going to so, be mean, any action uh, on your on Six Jacks's part on him, or is it just... uh, well? I mean, I can't really get into the inner workings of okay. how we deal with this too too deeply. But uh, it, he has been spoken to, and I mean, he's he's going to continue to improve his manner, his skill, all that stuff, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, a couple of years from now, no one's going to even think about these old things he did because by then, hopefully, you know, I've molded him into the proper human being and he's Gosu and everyone's just like cheering for him in Codes or something like that, you know? So uh, it's it's too bad it happened. Um, and I'm going to try to not let it happen again, man. <laughs> well, uh, another scandal that I don't even know if it's a scandal, it's just kind of bizarre, but. Uh, the whole Slayers Jessica thing happened in the past week. Lee, I know you were reading up on this, so go ahead and try to explain it the best you can. Well, it's kind so of a what weird I story. yeah, so what I think is going on is that uh, Slayers recently brought in Slayers Eve to kind of sit at the GSL. She wasn't actually playing, and then uh, the Slayers team as a whole got a lot of hate mail, and then people were photoshopping Eve onto like really nasty porn pictures and Slayer's Jessica got really upset about it and so she started um, I guess like taking screenshots and printing out every mean thing that people were saying about Slayer's Eve and she was going to bring them to the police and it's apparently it's a big deal in Korea and you're allowed to do this kind of thing in Korea and it's a, it's a big problem there um, and the police can find you in Korea if you said those things. It's not like here where you're anonymous. You actually have an ID that you have to sign up for, and so it's easier to track people there. And I guess, um, I mean, Dan, you probably know better than I do, but, like, I guess there have been a lot of celebrities that have committed suicide because yeah. of, you know, yeah. all the hate against them. So. What Slayers yeah. Jessica is trying to do is to nip it in the bud right before. I mean, the Slayers Eve's the first, you know, pro StarCraft II female player, so she just doesn't... She's trying to look out for a girl, and, you know, I, oh, I think is, it's interesting. No, I, I'm going to go ahead and agree with you, and just to fill people in a little bit, uh, I, I believe Korea, South Korea, has the highest celebrity suicide rate in the world. Uh, this is weird, because man. People, people get vicious on them, and there's yeah. there's something about it that... I mean, this is actually why, you guys, everyone is like, why can't I get a Korean Valorant account? Because every single thing you sign up for online, you must have a social security yeah, number yeah. for. You will be tracked. You can be sued in this way. If you shit talk in Korea, they know exactly who you are, where you live, That's your crazy, address, man. your age, every single thing about Imagine you. Imagine if that was true in the U.S., yeah. Dan. Do you, know, do you realize, like... <laughs> I know, <laughs> to be honest, it's crazy. It, it, it's, <laughs> uh, I I like that the entire she's doing chat it. right now would just be sued instantly, probably. Yeah, ninety yeah, percent um, of the chat. I mean, I I kind of like it that some of these people that are just saying these terrible things, like, does this girl deserve to be treated terribly because she's a girl pro gamer or a girl aspiring pro gamer? Uh, I mean, that's it's stupid and. I hope that it ends. I mean, I don't want to hear these things or see these things about people being like, 
flaming this girl? What if she's really good? I'm not really have sure. You I, don't met think her, I, do you I heard know she was a diamond. About her? A diamond I Karen player is what I heard. I haven't read. met her. I don't know. But uh, to be fair, Diamond on the Korean server is high masters on the North American European server. So she's apparently pretty good. Yeah. And she's on Slayer, so she's going to be, you know, getting really good. Yeah, no, I mean, if she's so. going to work her ass off, she can be a real pro. So, I mean, it is it is like a weird situation, especially coming from our culture. But yeah. uh, people get sued. People go to jail uh, in Korea for things like this. Weird. So I guess the the main thing people are asking is, do you think that Jessica's overreacting with, you know, with taking all these things down and bringing them to the police? Because I don't think she's overreacting. Uh, you know, this is... She, they probably went into this thinking it wouldn't be as bad as it became. Yeah. But if she really cares about this girl's, like, mental state, this might be something that she needs to do. Personally, I mean, I have, like, the thickest skin in the world. I'm actually made completely out of skin, so at this point, I, I don't give a shit what I read about myself. It's fine. But uh, I, it, it's it's hard for people. Like, when they start to get into the spotlight, like, Eve just came to the spotlight. She just was on the bench for the first time. Um, so that it might be something that will help her to continue her goals onward. I don't know. Have don't they know. played another match since that drama happened? Do you know, Artosis? No. Uh, no, no. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll check, or I'll check to see when they play again. Tyler, you got any thoughts on the, on the situation? No, nah, not really, no. All right, well, talk to me about the Code A finals, man, because it's PvP, and I know you love talking about that. <clears throat> yeah, well, let's just let's uh, just talk about all the PvP that happened. It's true, there was a lot. This week for okay. GSL. So we had Huck vs. MC. That's yeah. the very first thing that happened That'll be shortly short to after talk about. the game last week. And then we also had the Code A finals, and then we just had um, MC versus Hongen. Mm-hmm. And everyone's saying, you know, four gate, four gate, four gate. Yep. That it's back to just all four gates. So let me first of all say that I, I watched all those matches. I watched them carefully. Some of them I even watched twice. And I'm just going to say the PvP at Home Story Cup was higher level between Naniwa. Huck and MC, the games they played at Home Story Cup, I honestly think they were playing much better on average than what we saw from Huck, MC, Hong and Puzzle, and Tassadar this last week from GSL. I think Huck and MC both played worse in GSL than they played at Home Story Cup, and I think Naniwa played better than uh, Tassadar, you know, most of them. So there's that. I mean, if people are going to foregate and play poorly, then okay. Like, that's just proving that foregate's bad. The other thing is, you're still going to see foregates, even if foregate's bad. But if, like, if two players foregate and one guy defensively foregates and the other guy offensively foregates, the offensive foregate loses, then I think that's an argument that foregate sucks. Yeah, it's another game you can write down <laughs> two more foregates. That's all it is, is foregates. But if that keeps on happening and these pros realize that they can't really offensively foregate that successfully anymore, then they're just not going to do it. And then here's the other thing is, yeah, you have to defensively foregate sometimes. But there's really nothing wrong with that. If both players just defensively foregate, then yeah, technically they both foregated. But then it's just going to develop into a, a normal PvP. I I think there are problems with PvP beyond Fourgate, so I won't get into that. I'm saying there's nothing wrong with Fourgate just being the standard opening and both players playing it defensively. I could see that happening for a while. So in these past games this this week, like a lot of bad play, I think. I think <laughs> Huck in it. Well, Huck, when he was playing against MC, not so great. And then when MC played against Hongen. Yeah, so I watched great. those games. Well, I watched both series, but in the second game on Crossfire with Huck, do you think he would have won if he didn't hesitate with the initial stalkers down in MC's base? If you can remember back. Yeah, yeah. I think he mishandled that, and he missed an opportunity there. Yeah. Would you credit that loss to decision making then? Ultimately. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. What what happened in the f- oh the first game was on Fortress right and it was kind of back and forth. He uh, Huck should have pulled up his ramp there. They were like he took a Nexus. 
it's only fair that MC takes the Nexus. He should have walked up the ramp because he had DTs in MC's base, if you recall, at the top that's, right. That's what it was, yeah. So, yeah, uh, it was Huck lost that match, I thought, off of decision-making. I thought both times he, he played very well aside from that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, you mentioned MC Hong, and we're going to talk about the round of eight matches that happened last night. So if you haven't watched GSL from last night, you don't want it spoiled, here's your 15 seconds, however long I'm going to draw this out for, because we're about to spoil it for you, stop watching, blah, 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 you've been warned. Okay, so MC's out. He lost 3-1 to Hong, and um, I thought it was just going to be a quick 3-0, but he came back yeah. and won that third game. Um, but Tyler, what were your thoughts about that match? I mean, I'm you just blanking said, on the details, so right now I'm like uh, skimming through. It was it wasn't was it just like four gates was, versus four gates. It was gate? a lot of four gates from yeah. Hong and, mm-hmm. and MC just making mistakes. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. Like, yeah, yeah. what he was doing, he was not executing properly. MC was off. Those were actually the worst PVPs MC has played in a professional match. That was like a. It was four games, and I think... Three four gates from Hongan and a terrible Blink Stalker all-in. And then you, I think the total cast time was like 30 minutes, and you guys took no, like it was, two breaks? It was the quickest day ever, man. We couldn't even believe it. Yeah, I mean, that was that was an insane. The other series, of course, that happened last night was Nesty Coca. Nesty's just good, man. Oh, Nesty. <laughs> Uh, Coca's build on Zelda. Yeah, on Zelda. Yeah. That was awesome with the Ling. Let's talk out, about that just for a second. outside of the uh, over, Overlord range. That was pretty sweet. No, he he made an S, man. That oh, yeah, was like yeah, yeah. total But then he fucked up with the Bane Lings and just like A moved him onto yeah. the Queen. I, I, that I went back man. and watched the VOD because I thought that maybe Nest T targeted down with the Roaches and the Queen. No, they all went move. like that. Yeah, it, it was, was just an A move into the Queen, so that's too bad, but... Um, of course, that means. Well, I think exactly. Just, just to clarify exactly what happened there, it wasn't like he just went ah a move. Uh, I think he had everything grouped at once because I played a lot of ZVZs and yeah. the drones started coming out and his zerglings were in front. So I think he wanted his zerglings to start attacking drones, start giving them damage. So I think then he just hit attack and the the banelings happened to be lined up exactly with the queen at that point. So they just all went in instantly. Yeah. So I think that's ex- it. Was just like this millisecond of wanting to kill drones and not realizing that he had everything on one hotkey as everyone does in StarCraft 2. So I think, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened. So, does that mean that Nest T wins GSL July? Uh, <laughs> I mean, the matches I tonight so, yeah. are probably going to be his best, I mean, it will be his competitor, but I, the matches tonight yeah, are I, actually insane as well. No, the matches tonight are so good. Like, I would... I would give anything to have a trickster Nest T final. I'm actually getting chills thinking about that right now. I swear <laughs> to God, like, like I'm a sick trickster fan. I love that guy, man. He's right. so cool. But uh, I think it'll probably be Bomber. Well, Nest Beyond's T. Pretty good, last man. time they last time they met, yeah, Beyond is sick good. Uh, but Bomber is like a StarCraft one Terran, so he's it's, just going to make more siege tanks, and Beyond's going to be like, ah, you know, it's Bomber Beyond and Tester versus Lucira. Lucira, okay. Yeah. You don't. You think whoever's going to win between Beyond and Bomber will take out Lucira? Uh, no, not necessarily. But yeah, that's. I, I give them <laughs> the the upper hand, but definitely any of those four can make it to the finals. They they're all finals level players. Yep. Well, I, I think the um the one that would surprise a lot of people would definitely be Trickster making it to the finals. Wouldn't you say? You know, people I, not I you are to but, <laughs> Yeah. Okay, people. People, but Artosis wouldn't be surprised because uh, Trickster has been deserving a final since like before GSL was invented. Yeah, I mean he's actually been one of the best Protoss in Korea nonstop, and he's actually come up with some insane builds that do not get enough credit. Like that's true, he does do some. I mean his his like nine stuff. stalker harass against a one one Rax Expo. Oh, I like that build. That oh, and like we never see it because. He, I don't know. He just plays a little bit different from everyone, but I really like it. I like his play. <laughs> uh, Tyler, is there any more uh, PvP shenanigan talk that we need to talk about? The Code A finals was just. I mean, it wasn't Tassadar. It I was think pretty. Dis- Puzzle is clearly the better player. Yeah. The first two games, he kind of. I think he was a little flustered. He he wasn't playing his best in the first two games, and he dropped them. And those those were. Like clear mistakes on his part, I th- I thought too. Like just poor execution on his part, and he uh-huh. just lost the games. And then the next four, he just or it was four, 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, he just pretty much outplayed Tassadar, I thought. The last game it. was really good, actually. On I actually uh, haven't. Fortress. I haven't seen the last two games of that yet, but uh, I have to say, on the Taldorim game, Puzzle yeah. was dead for like four or five minutes, but he microed like really insanely well there for a Is little bit. Is that with bit. the two stalkers in his base where he just microed forever? Is that that game? Yeah, no, he, yeah, he, he had, basically, uh, Tassadar's units were in his base like the whole time, and uh, during like the middle parts and end part of that battle, like I was blown away by his micro. I was actually, I watched it twice last night. It was really nice. I also got to say on the four gates, Taldorim, you still have to four gate. Still have to four gate. I've said that <laughs> since day one. The only build you can do on Taldorim is four gate. When mm-hmm. people go like blank and they actually win, it's because the four gate are messed up. Like, yeah, no, you can't do four gate has a timing game. where yeah. as you're killing shit, blink finishes, and if you miss target, then blink can win. But that's literally the only build people should even ever think of trying on that map. You're so right; it's a completely a four gate map. Yeah. There's nothing that can be done about that. Yeah. So always expect 4Gate versus 4Gate on that map, <laughs> EVP. Um, and yeah. any map that's like that. Have with, you, uh, when you were light. streaming the other day, Tyler, did you encounter the fact that... like, I've, I've been streaming like 4 or 5 hours a night, and I think like mm-hmm. 60 or 70% of the time I get Taldorim Alter. Is that just my own experience? That's yeah. you. I, That's you. I guess it's just like, well, JP's random. He doesn't know how to play macro games, so he's, he's going to throw him to Dude, I, uh, <laughs> just to throw this out there, during the beta when I was actually like playing all day every day, uh, there were days where I just got a map. Like, 30 games in a yeah. row and 25 are Scrap Station. The next day, 30 games in a row, 25 are Lost I Temple. I haven't played that I think yet, I think something was going on, man. I haven't played that Um Delta Quadrant, I just don't even have that vetoed because everyone, I think everyone else does. Same as... Uh, oh, look Slag how pits. smart you are, JP. Also, no, no, no. Slag Pits, which should be renamed to Shit Pits. No one should yeah. ever play that map. Like that. No, that's a terrible <laughs> map. Like, why Did you see when they, they put, like, didn't someone from Blizzard say something like, people like Metalopolis because it's a macro map. So we made it, but more <laughs> macro. It's called Slag Pits. And it's like, ah, what are you talking about? It's the worst map ever. Oh, God. Uh. I did not see that. Um, I think next episode, when is, season three is supposed to start next week, right? A week from now, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think it's starting on the 27th, actually, which is the year anniversary <laughs> of, of StarCraft. But um, when we come back, because we, we may or may not have a show next week, and if we do, it's going to be about uh, Anaheim, but when we come back, uh, uh, hopefully you guys will look at the maps so we can kind of discuss them and, or have time to play on them or some. Dan, you'll probably be at home that entire week since you're not going to be there at, in Anaheim, so you should definitely play them yeah, I'll while be, we're gone. I'll be playing a lot, no doubt. And you can give us your opinion on them. I'll bring up stuff on the uh, on the screen and do Madden whiteboard and stuff like that on it. So we'll, we'll preview those maps for you guys uh, next episode, whenever that is. Um, I have some stuff in here about the Acer team being announced. Mondragon, um, Kairu, Paranoid, Nurcio, and Osho. Kairu being the manager. Uh, obviously, the two big names there are Mondragon and Nurcio. Um, he left... What was it Mouse? Was it, no, not Mouse. M-Y-M. M-Y-M, 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 yes. One of the M European teams. Um, <laughs> any? Do you guys have anything to say to that? Or I just threw it in there. Maybe if you guys wanted to talk about Mondragon some, since a lot of people may or may not know who he is too much. Uh, he's a legend from StarCraft yeah. 1. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he a lot of these like, new, like, StarCraft 2 people who didn't follow StarCraft yeah, 1. Yeah, Mondragon was the best non-Korean StarCraft 1 player for, like, years. Like, years. Just, he could just win anything that he wanted to. Yeah. That's who Mondragon was. He never went to Korea. He was always in school. And he never, at, I think at one point he probably played a lot, but he always said he didn't play a lot. Yeah, well, like, yeah he's one of those, man. He's like... Yeah, he likes to say he doesn't play a lot. People are like, he's so know. talented. It's like, well, no, dude, he's, he's played more games than everyone else, so, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, he's he's obviously a really talented yeah. StarCraft 1 guy. Um, and, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to see him go into a new team, and he's bringing along Paranoid, as always. I love that. He's got his little click over in Europe that he tries to drag around with him. Uh, I think that's really cool. And uh, But, I mean, I look at the team and I'm like, well, it, it might be good if he goes like really full-time, but I don't feel like Mondragon's really shown anything yet. And, I mean, I love Day 9. He made it really exciting. 
but roaches don't counter void rays or <laughs> phoenixes, and that match was terrible. So, I mean, I know that he won that, and it looked cool, and people were having a hard time with Protoss, but the Protoss didn't really know what he was doing, and it was a terrible match. So I haven't seen anything yet out of Mondragon that makes me be like, oh, that is my StarCraft One Mondragon, yeah. you know? Well, I've never heard of Paranoid. I feel like I've heard of Oshu. Nurchio is obviously someone I've, I've heard a lot about. I think he won... Or maybe beat out someone really important in, in Europe, I remember. But the, the team roster is not that strong. I mean, would you guys agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, well, I know. He's an up-and-coming guy, but as far as, like, getting an established star player, star, yeah, they, yeah. Don't, they don't have any right now. I don't know who Osho is. Who is that? Is that, like, an other RTS player from Templars of Twilight or something? Who, who is that guy? He's not from StarCraft One. Is all I don't Anyone know, know who Osho is? <laughs> I think he's... Is that the guy from Israel or something? Yeah. He's a Zerg from Israel. I think he huh. he made it to the DreamHack through the BYOC. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's an entire Zerg team. Yeah, I think it's all Zerg, yeah, right? <laughs> team. What the With hell? a French team Very manager from Zerg MGC. Star Star hmm. Hmm. Well, yeah. we'll see. <laughs> I'm all for Mondragon coming over and playing some MLG, so if you had to get the, on the Acer team to do that. One thing I, I want to throw out real, real quick is that that's like a completely Zerg team, which is kind of cool. If they all actually decide to take it seriously, which I don't know if Mondragon has that in him anymore. Uh, I haven't seen it yet in StarCraft 2, but if they did that, I mean, it really helps have a lot of teammates that you talk to a lot that Practice are your same rate. So. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean... Maybe we'll see something. I might love to. That'd be great. I have an yeah. Acer lap, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we got one one other big thing, but kind of a small thing, and this is just for Artosis, because you're the only one that could probably comment on this. Um, OGN's going to be casting the WCG Korea StarCraft II prelims. Uh, there's a bunch of rumors uh, lately about Casper yeah. Blizzard talking again that's been popping up on Team Liquid, and the player contracts end in August. Am I yes. playing devil's advocate, or is this going to start to turn over to where Kespa and StarCraft II might be something that's coming to fruition soon? You know, I'm I'm not really sure on that. Uh, the laws over here are different and stuff. Mm -hmm. it, from my understanding, GOM has the contract for two years, but maybe that could change. Um, I don't know. Uh, and as far as OGN doing WCG, I have heard that, and I think it's likely, but I'm not sure that that's actually... I'm not sure that that's actually the official final word on it. I oh. I don't know. I'm not really sure, but it's like I do know... Trade secret and shit. You know, <laughs> the thing is, GSL players are going to be playing in that qualifier. I mean, there's, there's no question. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's like the only players there are for StarCraft 2 in Korea, so... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't actually see there being any problem here at all. OGN is just a television station. It's, I mean, it's involved with Kespa and stuff. But yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, hopefully, everyone just plays nice together, and we just make a huge esports scene out here again. Hmm. All right. So let's move on to the main uh, topic. I mentioned earlier that next Wednesday, July twenty seventh, will mark the one year anniversary of StarCraft two because we don't have an episode next week uh, due to myself traveling and everyone else traveling to MLG, except for Dan. Um, we're not going to have a show, so we want to recap kind of the past year in StarCraft II, and instead of just going around being like, Leah, why don't you tell me a story about StarCraft II this year? I have a list here, and we're going to go through it, and the way this is going to work is we're going to go around, only, like, you say your answer, you don't give a description, and then we'll kind of talk about ah. it afterwards. <laughs> so if we talk about it afterwards, you give ah. a description, and... If you're affiliated with, directly affiliated with, so Artosis, you can't answer GSL. I can't answer okay. MLG. Tyler can't answer, answer TSL or Team Liquid. And no G4 TV. And no G4 oh. TV Star League thing. So None of that. Soon. <laughs> um, I'm just saying. And I'm, I'm trying to think. Oh, and you can't, you can't use the same answer as the person before you, Tyler. I've like figured out all the rules here, oh, so everyone's got <laughs> everyone's got to say something. So first oh one, God. we're gonna start off, and I'm gonna go. We'll go backwards and forwards, back and forwards. Artosis, you're gonna start off. Best tournament, name it. Uh, and you can do sep. Oh no, you can't do GSL because you work for them. No, I can't do GSL. <laughs> so I was like already going through my head, like what's the best GSL tournament we've had? No, JP's <laughs> ruined that. Ah. Um, uh, 
<laughs> I'm like trying to think of the specifics of each tournament. Um, maybe the last uh, MLG. All right, mm-hmm. Tyler, it's, you're next. Same question. Same question, man. What's your best tournament? No description. Just tell me oh. why. Then afterwards, we'll discuss. God. You know, I have the worst memory out of anyone in the world. Put me on the spot. Maybe. GSL. <laughs> You're just gonna what name was the good one? <laughs> well, all the finals sucked. So. Dan, help me out. <laughs> what was the good? GSL? Dude, <laughs> not the first ones. The first ones are pretty bad. Um, well, they were bad, but the first GSL learning. was pretty sick, man. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was like huge prize like fruit dealer won when no zerg in the world won a ladder game like it was exciting even though the play was like the most terrible like toilet brush play i've ever seen <laughs> all right tyler you gotta go i'm gonna say the four i i don't even know if this is the gsl i'm thinking of but like the fourth gsl what? Even... okay well we'll come back <laughs> yeah, to that why description, we'll so. come back why uh <laughs> My one, your- mine's easy. Home Story Cup. That that was my favorite tournament. Sim- not maybe not because of the games, although the finals were incredible. So were the semifinals. But just like the atmosphere of the tournament was definitely uh, a ton of fun. Leah, you're up. Best tournament. Um, can't say Columbus. Can't say Home Story. Can't uh, say GSL I wasn't four. Going to. I was gonna say TSL three. Loved it. All right, now, Artosis, why did you say that? <laughs> because you put me on the spot and I couldn't say the real answer, which was a GSL, JP. That's why. Um, no, I, I thought the last MLG, though, was very good. I don't, I mean, I didn't get to watch it all, but there were some awesome games. I just realized that. Why didn't you guys say I, I said Home Story Cup and then said why. <laughs> you guys are like, holy shit, he did. Anyways, Artosis. Cheater. A cheater. Um, I don't know. I I loved some of the storylines of the last MLG. There's suddenly like code A spots on the line. Koreans invade. You know, uh, we had like some really nice Korean versus foreigner matches. Some Idra stuff. Idra left like six games too early. You know, it was. There were a lot of fun things that happened at the event. I thought it was a pretty great tournament. That's true, Tyler. Why? Why GSL event now, number four? <laughs> I'm now Liquipedia GSL four, which was GSL January 2011, so I can see what I picked. Uh, you know, it really wasn't bad. We had uh, <laughs> we had that's when uh, Jinro beat MC in the groups. So oh, you know, that was a good tournament. It's a good pick, yeah. Man. That was actually pretty good. MVP Who won that one? That. It was MVP. And that was the was final a, against uh... Marine King. Poor Marine King Prime, oh, new oh. silver champion. Oh man! Following the legacy of <laughs> Yellow and uh, Stork. Stork. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that, that actually was a really good tournament. Yeah. Well, I already gave my reason because I cheat apparently. Uh, Leo, why TSL? Um, I just thought it was a really well-run tournament, and the finals were fucking amazing. Yeah, that's, that's a good true. Answer. Yeah. Um, I think she had the best thought out answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Well, now we're going backwards. So, Leah, you up? You're up. Worst tournament? Go. Um, I would have to say if we're just talking about games that the GSL finals are usually pretty trash. Well, this is like um, like all encompassing. So it could be encompassing from production, to from games, all all of that combined into one. <laughs> Uh, Production games. I'm not really sure what else goes on. Maybe, in maybe I am. Which uh, ones? Last, well, like the first one, like last, the last one, not the one that's going on now. Okay, I guess you can't <laughs> give a reason why, so we'll come back to that. Yeah. Um. Well, I can't say MLG, so that's out. So I guess I gotta go with the first day of the NASL finals because after that I think Saturday and Friday were good or Saturday and Sunday were good Tyler go I will say MLG Dallas you're fucked Artosis you are (laughs) fucked (laughs) I went ahead and stole that one Uh, I mean do I I was hoping that would get to me I can't explain that yeah you can't Artosis go go. oh (laughs) shit um you no, can't I'm say GSL you guys, either. What? You guys basically took everything. Um, I don't. I don't even think uh, there, there, it was like those. 
I wouldn't even count IEM as... I, I forgot what happened at that event that made it quote-unquote bad. Or poor. I guess probably a tournament that I didn't see that took place in a country that I... <laughs> no. Uh, I don't know. You guys took all the good bad ones and no one said GSL Season 3. So I'm going to break your rule, JP, and say GSL Season 3. I think you have to, but why, why Season 3? Which, what's because season every single game in the entire tournament was cheese. Every single one. Oh, was that during the like tearing all in? Phase? That was bit by bit prime. That was uh, the best OU. Okay. That was just SCV all ins every single game. We never saw layer tech or factory units or you know anything beyond four gates. It was just terrible. I went in every day and just casted cheeses, and it was it was brutal, man. I thought it was a terrible tournament. Tyler, what was your answer? Oh, you said MLG Dallas. Uh, MLG, okay, yeah. I, yeah, that's I think. I think for all these, they're pretty self-explanatory why it was, quote-unquote, the worst tournament. Um, well, fuck, I don't want to start Dan with this, because he's going to have an answer right off the bat. Best match, Dan, go. Uh, Puma MC Finals? Ooh, not what I thought you would pick. Oh, the SC and ST one you thought? Yeah. Anyways. That one's sick good, too, man. Yeah. But I'll, I'll go with Puma MC, because I get to sit in the audience. But anyways, go ahead. Tyler? Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, for me, it's gotta be Huck versus Moon at DreamHack. But, you know, everyone yeah. knows why, and we'll get to that. <laughs> right, right. Um, I, I mean, the SC Nest T thing, but it was only really. The series was good, but that last game, or the, the Crossfire game, was like what made that series. That was the greatest game, man. That was the greatest game. Yeah, singular game, I think that would, that would win, but yeah. for match. I guess I'll just say that. Leah, Leah go. Uh, mine are still Naniwa vs. Thorzane in TSL 3 Finals. It was just so epic. I'm trying to think. Tyler, you said Huck Moon. Was that just because Huck won? Or, I mean, this game's I mean, I mean, there's been a lot of series that have been, like, well, I mean, okay, there's like I think like you're going to get the value shit from for it for saying that out of all of our <laughs> other fans. <laughs> there's value from strategy, right? Like you're in awe of how good the players are, like strategy and execution. And then on the other hand, there's entertainment value. And so just because of how I was personally involved with the match, the entertainment value was through the roof. And there's nothing that's been that's true. like strategically compelling to me that is able to outweigh that, so that's why I picked it. Artosis, you said NASL finals. I mean, that's yeah. pretty fresh in everyone's mind. Dude, not really much. It was to say there. that was the highest level StarCraft two we've seen, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, that, I agree with that yeah, Puma basically looked at it and said, "Well, I'm going to make more Marines because they're actually better than Marauders when you play perfect." And then he did so, and uh, MC like won that game on Terminus. So, like, oh, that yeah. alone is, like, <laughs> the that greatest thing that ever occurred. <laughs> I don't... I'm still in shock. And I, like, I sat next to Liquid Rat for most of the match, and we actually were predicting battles wrong, which, like, we're, like, old StarCraft 1 guys. We don't predict battles wrong. We don't look at it... And, and you know, I'm not, like, commenting to anyone. I'm actually having a real discussion <laughs> with Rhett, and we get wrong who's going to win a battle. And it's, like, that is so entertaining for me. I thought that was just the greatest match that we've seen in StarCraft 2. Even better than the Nest T SC Foe, which was like so good. Yeah, the best part of Nest TSC was literally seeing Artosis cry after the match. It's just like hot talk. <laughs> he just like it's low res, dude. You didn't see shit, JP. Dude, no, no, no. You can watch the vods, man. They're in, they're in high quality. You can go sign up right now. You're fucked, Dan. You were teary eyed. <laughs> I was. It's fine. Um, and then TSL three finals. That was. I mean, that's just the best was, of seven. That was good. It was really good. I mean, it came down to the last game. It came down to the last fight of the last game. I mean, it, it was just so epic. And then you knew that they were in the. I don't know the same room together. And then Hotbid came on after and just said that Naniwa was like. I don't know. It, just, it, it was just everything was so crazy good about that, and the tournament was just so awesome. It was a great way to end the tournament. Like. Um, the That's NESL true. finals were a great way to end that tournament. So um, it was awesome. All Should right. Get out. Lee, you're awesome. up. Best patch fix. Me again? Yep. Wait, did you start last time or was it Dan? <sighs> uh, I started. Okay. Um, it's her turn. Yeah. 
That means you're fucked. Or fixed. <laughs> best mm. patch fix was making roaches two supply instead of one supply. I would say it was pretty imbalanced. Best patch fix was the bunker change to seventy five percent or seventy five <laughs> minerals. <laughs> Tyler, go. I think uh, the archon changes have been really cool. It's uh, brought. Well, I can't explain it. No, now. You can't. You can't. You know, stuff. Artosis, go. Everyone's. Oh good. God! I thought you guys would do better with this question. I have two that I, I don't know which one to say. I guess I'll. <laughs> I guess. Fixing uh, the Reaper it fundamentally broke oh, the game. Oh God, dude. that was so f- yeah. See, you guys were terrible in your answers, that's man. I, I want to talk about the Infester that, too. That's, that's what I was going to say about I am was that the Reapers were so unbalanced, but you didn't ask me why. I think I am. That's why. That's <laughs> JP's why new to do. hosting. I'm so sorry. Yeah, this, I haven't done this before. I'll get used to it eventually. <laughs> um, so Tyler, why why Archon Massive? What does it well, change, it's, it's, or what, what matchups has it affected so much? Like, all three matches. Well, I mean, the art, the change to massive and the range increase. Like, all three matchups, it's affected, but it hasn't, like, made Protoss overpowered. It hasn't made Archons overpowered. It's just made them viable. And uh, so people can actually do a greater variety of strategies, and it's just been pretty cool. So I thought... I thought it was very nice how they could make a change like that that changes the way units interact with each other and then it changed unit compositions for all three matchups and then changed build orders, changed strategies, just all of that without anything like really breaking. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty phenomenal actually. It's true. Well, my reasoning is because the next question is the worst patch fix, and it was so bad that it was actually the best. So, <laughs> Artosis, you go now. What's what's the best, or excuse me, the worst patch fix? The worst patch fix. See, I was supposed to go last this time, JP, so no, I, you weren't. I don't know. Uh-uh. Leo really? went first last time, man. You can't trick me. Uh, I'm on point. Uh, um... <laughs> uh, okay, I got it. All right, wait. Uh, making the Terran upgrades upgrade quicker for Marines. Which one was... Oh, was that for the stem? It's way old. Way, way old. No, no, no. No. That, they made that longer. Wow. Um, what they The upgrades for Terran upgrades used to be a little bit longer, and now they're quicker. Oh. I, I actually so. forgot about that. Tyler, worst patch. <laughs> I'm going to say the... Uh, very recent warp gate research time change to increase it. We sh- I should actually put in a rule that you can't say something that affected the race you play. That. <laughs> yeah, that's all his answers, aren't they? <laughs> I'm an no, expert no, no. on the race. No. Like, why? Uh, <laughs> so my answer again is uh, the bunker change. Because what the fuck? Like, it's just such a weird fix. What? Whatever. Leah, worst patch fix. Um, I was thinking about it, and I thought that the patch before MLG DC, where they completely changed um, oh. so many things about the game, what, <laughs> that's like was, the worst timed patch. Yeah, oh, the it was fix. just the worst patch. I mean, it completely changed. I mean, medevac slower. It increased HP on ten units. Dan, <laughs> you you may answer. I I want to change my mind on which patch was the worst. It was the one that. Do you remember back during the beta, we could uh, there was a latency fixer, so you could play other realms as well? Mm-hmm. And then they patched it and changed it so you couldn't use that anymore. Wait, I, I never heard I about the latency that. fixer. Yeah, that's, that's the truth right there, man. I was playing on other servers without terrible latency. It was a great time. Is that when they introduced... The units like, moved. Is that when... Did, they, did Real ID exist when the beta went live? Yeah. What about the Facebook but, uh, thing? Did that exist? No, that was a little bit later. But uh, huh. removing oh, a latency that. fixer through one patch, that was the most terrible, like... <sighs> People are, dude, it the hurts. chat's like, are you fucking kidding me? And their heads are, like, turning and snapping <laughs> off right now. You just killed a thousand. Yeah, I know, this, it happened during the beta, man. It was, like, a sad, sad day for me. Um, Tyler, I'll never you... play another European. <laughs> Tyler, did you explain your reason at all? You said... No, I, I haven't yet. The warp gate research time, because... It's supposed to be like to fix PvP, mm-hmm. but like it's had no effect on PvP, 
and it's just been like a witch hunt kind of thing. It's like trying to figure. Yeah, they're trying to fix four <laughs> yeah. gates, and it's like they make a change that doesn't actually change four gates that much. And I don't know. This whole four gate issue has just been a pet peeve of mine. But. Yeah. And that, actually, that that is just complicated it because it was like supposed to fix it, and when it came out, I was like, "Well, that's not really going to fix PvP." Oh, I always thought about it two hasn't. episodes ago where I was like, "PvP is really fun to watch," and then like the past PvPs that have been streamed have been like four gate after four gate after four gates. So maybe it's just like the Home Story Cup Finals were really fun to watch. And that's all I should have said. But um, <laughs> yeah. The next two ones, I, I guess, kind of go hand in hand. It's it's. I have written down most wanted patch fix and most wanted game feature, so you can throw those in. Am I first? Uh, no, Leah is. <laughs> <laughs> it just uh, isn't going my way today. So w- no. We'll just actually throw that into one thing because they're kind of the same thing. Uh, so most wanted. Oh, okay, actually, no, no. Patch fix will be about balance. Game feature will be something that's not in the game. That's how we'll specify that. So most wanted, most wanted patch fix, Leah. Um, I I was talking to a few people about this, and I think that the Archon should be an armored unit, and it should be a massive unit. Um, I don't, I, I don't really agree with Tyler. I think I've seen them be a little bit overpowered, um, in a few matchups recently, and I think that would help fix it. I don't even have an answer for this. I'm trying to think. (laughs) Um... I feel like infestors need to be toned down a tiny bit, but I don't know what it is that they need to be toned down by. And that's probably just because I hate TVZ, because that matchup is like impossibly hard for Terrans right now. now. On all levels of the game, it feels like. But there I go, giving an explanation again. Tyler? Uh, I think Warp Prism should be buffed. I'm not sure exactly how they can make it a little sturdier, or this might be a little extreme, but they could just... To take away the upgrade and just make it faster by default. I'm not sure if that would be broken or not, but uh, something to make them a little more viable for harass. Like the way they are now, you can you can like just park them somewhere hidden and warp shit in, and that's cool. Yeah. But to actually like drop and pick up and harass and stuff. It's once Artosis goes, I want to talk to you a little bit more about that. Artosis. Yeah. Patch fix, the most wanted one. Um, <clears throat> I think I would go with taking that extra damage off the stalker that we got a long time ago. I'd like to see how the game plays out without that extra damage for a while. Uh, we see too much uh, just straight up like stalkers against Zerg. Like every Korean Protoss right now just goes stalkers against Zerg. And when you can actually just do that and have blink and like, <laughs> I look at the situation, I'm like, well, it's just stalkers, right? You. This should yeah, be able to be strong. You have, you have Hydroling with a medium amount of roaches to tank. Like you should be, and then no, they get slammed. I think that that extra damage was it Hong and that did that against someone in the round of sixteen. That's that's everybody, man. Like, I guess I'm just like thinking about simple. every. Yeah. yeah, it's happening. I mean, he did it against Zinio. That, yeah, that's, he had a lot of stalkers. Yeah, but it's everyone. Well, that was a terrible match. That's not indicative. Yeah, it was. Of, <laughs> <laughs> was one of the it was really sets really I've ever bad. seen. <laughs> um. Tyler, actually, when you were streaming the other day, um, yeah. it was a PVT on what's the blistering sands tile set that I have blocked out, so I never play it. Backwater Gulch. Backwater Gulch, yeah. and yeah. he had like three bunkers at the bottom at his natural, and you brought yeah. a warp prism with two immortals, and put it up on to yeah. whatever. Is is that in your eyes the best way to utilize a warp prism right now? Is to elevate her stuff up to the top? Or just elevator, I guess I don't need to explain that anymore. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, that's one of the main things you can do with it. At least against, like, a, a fast-expanding Terran. Is just to elevator everything. Like, I've been trying to do the Immortal Harass, where you you don't really have the rest of your army there. It's That's all you're ever going to attack with is Immortals, so it's kind of different mindset. Mm-hmm. And that's, like kind of it just feels too risky it feels too easy to lose everything and then mm. you're in a lot of trouble so i don't know i try to i try to like be honest with myself too because like reaver harass was kind of similar like for starcraft one you you flew around with the shuttle and the reaver and yeah if you mess something up and you lost it there's definitely a, a lot of like 
hazardous areas and ways that you had to be careful with the shuttle. And if that had to do, there were a, skirt, a lot of. Right? Well, for, even for PVT though, like you, there was like a science to how you engaged every little mm. situation. And yeah, like ten years into the game, we had all this figured out down to a science. And you, you would just laugh at someone who did something stupid with their shuttle in the reaver. And you would just expect everyone to do it perfectly, but I don't think it's really down to a science so much for StarCraft Two. So I try to be it's, honest with myself and and make sure I'm not just, you know, being dumb, like playing bad and just wanting the game to be easier. <laughs> but at the same time, it does seem very, very fragile. And like the best the, thing you could say, off, like the because a reaver could kill like a billion SCVs and that would be pretty sick. Yeah, they're immortal. And they could kill a, a tank in just two shots and. The Immortals, you know, you pick off a tech lab. <laughs> you, like, kill two SCVs. You kill <laughs> a depot. Yeah. Like, that's the kind of shit you're doing. I think the so. best the best um, info that you could really say to back up your story about War Prisons being buffed is that on that game where you did the elevator, one Marine kept coming back to try to hit your War Prism, and every time it came back, it got it to red. <laughs> yeah. It killed all of the, the shields in, like, three seconds, and it was just one Marine. Shit, there's an escape. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Watts Tyler Gillaby. Did you get him? Yeah, I got him. Good job. <laughs> Good job. I love how he just has a fly swatter right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, for I, people, I yeah, for people listening, Tyler just said, oh shit, a mosquito, and then immediately just saw a fly swatter raise up out well, of nowhere. Some, you know, occasional mosquito comes in my room, and I told Lindsay, hey, I was like, we need a fly swatter because we didn't have a fly swatter in the house so next time we went to the store we got one and now I just keep it near my desk so I'm, <laughs> I have defense now All so right. yeah it's handy uh, Artosis you said the stalker change in terms of yeah. damage <clears throat> you think that would just I mean how big of a uh, the, an effect would that make on some of these matchups I, I feel like right now stalkers in PVZ might be too good. I'm not sure of it. Uh, I don't think that it will really affect the other matchups too much because stalkers are kind of like anti-Viking, anti-drop, like just kind of a middle part of your army against Terran. You know, like uh, they're still going to kill Vikings fine. You know, they get that damage bonus and all that. I just, the fact that in Korea, everyone is doing this because it's like it's pretty easy to just make a ton of stalkers and go roll over Zerg, no matter what unit composition he has. <laughs> so that's that's too much. Uh, and I I thought it was stupid when they gave stalker plus one. I didn't see a reason for it back then, and I still I don't know why it has that plus one. I'd like to see how it plays out without it. I'm not saying for sure that this is this is how it has to ha- be, David Kim. No, I mean. I think it would be a really good thing to try out and see if that slowly changes what we're seeing in Korea. But uh, I agree with what Tyler's saying also in the War Prism. There's something a little bit off about that thing. All right. Uh, Artosis, you're up. Most wanted game feature. D&D. Do not disturb mode. <laughs> One that works. I want to be able to get online and not have jackasses you know, invite My me geez. into <laughs> channels. <laughs> <laughs> and the, you know, well, dancer are obviously is just join five chat channels so they can't invite you. Yeah, I'll be sitting there recording a vod, and I hear messages coming up, even though I have busy on, and it's like, well, that's great to have those in the vod. I mean, that makes sense. It's it's ludicrous that there's no D and D yet. It's it's not fair. It's stupid. It's really messing up uh, the experience of anyone that gets on, really. If people want to screw with them, they can. It's too bad. Yeah. Tyler. Ah, oh, Dan stole mine. I'm trying to think of something. Uh, I mean, they really... I wish they could fix the latency for for long distances. And I know I've... Well, we'll explain it later. You guys <laughs> breaking rules. Yeah, I just, sorry. Um, I feel I like there's, I feel like there's two huge ones, so I, it's easy for me. I'll just say watching replays with friends, like synced replays. That's what I was gonna say. Well, there's like That's the a, biggest. Um, there's the biggest land, reason. Land. Okay. We don't have land. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, easy. It's like the easy one. Tyler, explain. I, I mean, think, like our are, are pretty self-explanatory. I've heard some like technical explanations why it's difficult, but. 
I don't know, man. That's pretty ridiculous. That's I, I can't even say ridiculous. I gotta <laughs> make it even f- a further ridiculous word by saying ridiculous because, like, I mean, it's it's a newer game and it has worse latency than its predecessor. <laughs> like, the game from 1998, I can play, you know, across continent and it's playable competitively. And I I need that for StarCraft too. I I just don't know what else to say. Like it's really important for esports, and it would just be really really nice uh, to be able to do that. Even if it's some like weird way. Even if it's not just like connecting to BattleNet and playing ladders. Even if it was only you know custom games where we needed some weird setup for it. If it was just possible, that that would yeah. be nice. I feel like the sync replays. I mean from running tournaments to helping pro players watch a free play with another pro player to just watching games on a casual level like just seems like it should be there that seems pretty self-explanatory and i think land modes probably the same way like yeah although the only for land mode it could only really be used for tournaments right cuz it's not going to affect like if you go over and land with a friend you're going to want to play online against well, I guess not. Not but necessarily. Yeah, I I don't know. There's probably too much, not too much else we could say. So, um, all right, Leah, this is where it gets kind of weird. Player you expected to shine and did. Um, I would say probably Idra, and then maybe Select. Uh, shit! No, I gotta go. You said two answers. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm thinking of either of them. No, I'm just Let like, does that mean I could say select? Um, I don't know, man. I think that the hasn't is, is the easier answer, but... Do it, <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to just cop out and say select, but I didn't think he was gonna do well at all. <laughs> so that's not even. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know him beforehand, so it's like. Yeah. The thing is, I I knew Star Two players beforehand, but they were like Star One players, and a lot of the Star One foreigner players aren't doing that well. Hmm. I don't have an answer actually. That's my answer. <laughs> Tyler, go. Because I can't say a Korean player, because then like, I didn't know that many Korean players beforehand. So I'm gonna go ahead and say Huck. You knew he was gonna do what? Well, Artosis go. <laughs> <laughs> Bad influence. Puma. Yeah, yeah. you kind of did call that. All right, Tyler, Huck you, from. I'm gonna because this because this is going far back. Yeah, yeah. Before everyone was like, okay, this guy's pretty good. This is going back to the beta, where it was like I was very skeptical of like every person I didn't know from StarCraft One during the beta. I was like, okay, yeah, I know the StarCraft One players who have talent, um, and like any StarCraft One player who wasn't really good at StarCraft One, I was just wrote them off like oh they're not that great and Huck was one of those he played Starcraft 1 he wasn't a pro from some other game he was just like a pretty good Starcraft 1 player that was never competitive at all really and then he came to Starcraft 2 so I was thinking he was bad but then I actually watched some of his replays and there was just little things I picked up on that weren't common knowledge or were things that people were rarely doing right at that time during the beta and I was like yeah he gets it he gets like how you need to play what little improvements you need to do to get better and from what I had heard about his work ethic like how hard he'd been working how much he wanted to get better I was like I think this guy's gonna be pretty good he turned out a little better than I thought he would (laughs) but (laughs) uh yeah Hopefully he's not listening because his ego is going to shoot through the roof. <laughs> uh, Artosis Puma, do you even need to explain it? 
I think everything I, you've said about him has been on state of the game. <laughs> it's already been said. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just I <laughs> knew how good he was in StarCraft One, and I knew eventually he was going to shine. And he's he's killing, man. He's kicking ass. And fancy too, dude. You like yeah, all man. the Easter players. So let's be Easter clear guys, here. Man. When I was in I was in Korea for only two months. I played on Eastro, Bomber, Puma, Trickster, Killer. Killer. We were all there when I was there. We all played StarCraft 1 together. And now they're all switching to StarCraft 2 and they're awesome. Yeah. Actually, this, the Eastro players, I mean, Eastro's dissolved now, but like the former Eastro players are doing pretty well for StarCraft 1 too, I think. Like, they were, they action, were a good team, man. What's his name? Action, something like yeah. that. Yeah, Sunday. Yeah. yeah. And Hiva and really, they're, yeah, they're kicking ass. Yeah. They, it was like a really good group of potential players yeah. that just had like a terrible, terrible coaching staff. That's what it was. <laughs> uh, Leah, I feel like Indra's yeah. the easy answer here, but yeah, you want to explain yourself? Answer. I mean, is, we all know. All right. So, all like, right. I will just move on then. I didn't. I still don't have an answer. I was trying to think of one the entire time. <laughs> Maybe I'm just being like too critical and trying to think of someone I knew before StarCraft 2 came out. But did, did you know Huck prior to StarCraft 2, Tyler? No. Okay. I mean, I heard of the team he was on. <laughs> as <did. laughs> He was like Canada B. That's fine. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's right, Keeper, man. USC's Keeper. represent. Keeper was the team he was on. All right. Uh, Artosis player you expected to shine but did not or has not. Oh, uh, Clyde. <laughs> Fuck, that's such an easy. Tyler, I have a lot to say about that. JP, come back to me. Quick. Um, me? <laughs> well, no, that's my answer. You can't say that. <laughs> I mean, it's, someone's got to, but <laughs> you can't say yourself. Um, I guess, kind of. Hey, pro. I'll explain that more later. Yeah, my answer is Tyler. Uh, someone's got to say it. Leah? Um, the player that I expected People to People are going to think like we hate each other and shit. <laughs> <laughs> we need an I Love JP show. Um, no, I think that everyone that Artosis predicted to be the best StarCraft II player but isn't, that's who hasn't shined. That's very unkind. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm gonna say for my real answer, uh, fruit dealer. Oh yeah, he hasn't really uh, done too much. That's good. Answer. He got eighty-seven thousand dollars. I think he's like, yeah, fuck, fuck, Starcraft. I'm out. Yeah. I'm gonna go fucking go to my private island. All right, uh, Artosis Clyde, explain. Uh, all right. First off, I want to go ahead and say he's been the most solid player with Nada. It's just statistically, it's true. He's he's done very well every single season, but he didn't get any championships. And uh, <clears throat> I was in a position that actually only like one of the Korean commentators is in the same position as me, where we actually click around on everything during the game. So during his GSL matches, I actually saw everything he was doing, and I swear to you, I watched every game played. Oh, I can't hear you now if you're talking to me, but I watched uh, every game that uh, everyone played, all the pros and everything back then. I'm talking season one of GSL, season two of GSL, and then even season three of GSL. Most 100% in season one and two, Clyde was the best player in the world. No question. It looked like a StarCraft one pro back then. Everyone was terrible. He kept his macro going. He had really smart builds. He was playing safe. But he would just get, like, cheesed out and stuff. So, I mean, just when I started casting him in the beginning of season one, I was like, wait a minute. What is this? And I didn't even really know who he was. I looked into him like, oh, the NBC guy. He uh, was a coach for a bit, a pro gamer for a bit. Never really did anything, but he was the best player in the world at that time. Whether he won or not, he was actually the highest overall skill level that I ever saw. And so I was really surprised that he never actually got to make it through because it was like, I'm talking two and a half levels above like Fruit Dealer and stuff. Like, <laughs> no question. Tyler, explain for some reason I forgot your answer i mean for hey pro like oh, for a right, while right. like in 2010 when liquid had the guys in korea and like no one was really doing that well and then finally like jinro uh like won that mlg um 
you know, the national finals in Dallas, that was like the first time I think that people were like, oh, like the liquid players aren't horrible. Like they're actually getting good at StarCraft in Korea. But then like after that, I mean, it was general that won that, but I really feel like it could have been anyone. It could have been Haypro. And then even like the months following, Jinro went on to have success. I'm not taking anything away from Jinro and saying he was just lucky or something. I'm just saying like from my perspective back then, I was like, hey, pros as good as Jinro, as good as Rhett, as good as Huck for StarCraft 2. Like any one of them could have like busted out and done well. And like hey, pro and his practice games and stuff was playing well. Like he just couldn't he couldn't get everything together at, at a time to like rise up. And so, I don't know. He still has it in him, but he just hasn't hasn't done it yet. Before I destroy what little left is between me and Tyler's friendship, is there a reason you think uh, <laughs> <laughs> why? Uh, or I mean, comparing now to six months ago, nine months ago, is it going to be impossibly harder for someone to uh, come up and just like win a tournament? Say for now, is it going to be impossibly harder for Hey Pro to come out and win a tournament, Tyler? Um, could be, but I think it's more of a mental problem than it's actually like a problem that the scene has, you know, that the skill level on the scene has gotten so hard that it's Mm -hmm. not, not possible to, to get, to get there that quickly. Like you just got to believe that you can play that well and that you can win a tournament and that your strats are good, that your performance will come through when it counts. All right, well, Tyler, <laughs> you won uh, the TSL 2. It's the biggest thing. Right at, like, a week before the beta started or something for StarCraft 2. Um, and since then, I mean, everyone kind of just... It hasn't been going well for you. You're very, like, outspoken about, about the fact that you don't practice. Is there... <laughs> I mean, like, what's going on, man? Like, why aren't you... Everyone says if Tyler practiced, he could be the best in the world. Artosis is shaking his head right now. <laughs> It's true. What, what's going on, Tyler? I like well, made this know, entire thing to just put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like actually that big of an this, asshole. This like fun segment about the best and the worst things in the past year. Turned into <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> like all of a sudden the fucking camera people walk into your house and the taping of intervention. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I mean, I've been asked to explain before and I haven't, so nothing's really changed, but I'm still trying to practice full time. So, I mean, you'll know when I've practiced full time because I'll win it the next tournament <laughs> that I enter. <laughs> like, I, I, it's probably ridiculous for a lot of people to hear like that kind of arrogance, but it's, it's more a confident attitude that my fans from StarCraft One would understand. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I can't really explain why All right. publicly why I haven't like put in a professional effort for StarCraft II. Right. But, uh, yeah. I mean, like I said when you asked me about HeyPro, like, is it too late to just all of a sudden come and be the best player, win a tournament? No, it's not. And I believe that for myself, too. So. All right. And, uh, Leah, you said Fruit Dealer. I did. I think that, you know, he won the first GSL and that was amazing. And then he hasn't really made such a huge splash since then. So, um, I don't know. He's still around and he's, but I don't know. I just don't think that he's shining as bright as I thought he was going to. Is he still, is he in the up and down matches this time around? Or is he even in Code A? I thought he where, where is he's, he, Artos? He's he's, he's uh I don't even he's remember. up and down, I believe. Yeah, I, he's not From in Code, Code A S. yet. He's still Code S. Uh oh. did he I was like in travel, so I'm I don't Yeah, that's exactly exactly, exactly. We like, like before you, I said, Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, he's he's like, off, but yeah. now like now he you know, he's kind of fallen off a little bit. I, I think he's up and down. I he's think. up and down, falling off. 
All right. Uh, a couple more. Artosis, top five players in no order. So you don't have to rank in the world? top five. Yeah, in the world. Okay. Uh, Puma, MC, uh, Sage, Nesty. And I should also finish Artosis, then I'm going to clarify <laughs> the rule. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, after that, it, it's pretty hard for me. Uh, well, here, I'll, I'll clarify. It, it doesn't have to be, like, top best players in the world, just, like, top five players that you enjoy watching or you oh. think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Does that change everything, Artosis? It changes a little bit. <laughs> I like to watch uh, Tyler. you got to watch his stream. He's so fun to watch. Seriously, I watch Tyler a lot. Um, Puma, I like to watch because he's just so damn good. Even though I, you know, I'm not a huge Sarka Two Terran. Uh, <laughs> it's players I like to watch. You said right. Yeah, My favorite yeah, but, players to watch. But ex explanations, man. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Puma, Nesty, Tyler, Sage, and. Uh, I don't know. Another Protoss. Maybe like uh, Alicia. Yeah, Alicia. That's it. There you go. All right. Tyler. And for this one, you can't say prior answers because we're just going to like run out of players. Uh, Puma. Nesty. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the exact um, same ones. Yeah. Say Tyler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Naniwa. Um... Two more. Rhett and there's gotta be another Korean I like. Who do I like in Korea? Sage. I no, I I didn't fall in love with them. I watched those games. Did you watch the? You watched. I the watched games? those. I watched. And you weren't games. like, well, he's smarter than anyone else. I'm watching. You weren't <laughs> like that. Tell me the truth. You weren't <laughs> no, like that. No, he was smart, but I didn't fall in love with him. That's all. So. Uh. <laughs> I'll say uh, I like watching MC. I do. I'm gonna say MC, even though you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, White Raw. Um, Nesty, I think that's going to be on everyone's list. Um, Idra. Who else? Naniwa. And probably Marine King. Oh, poor Marine King. Um, Dan, I'm really surprised you didn't say Clyde. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. It's got to be five, man. <laughs> Um, for me, I'd have to say Lenok, Thorzane, uh, Idra, July, and Druby. Have to say Druby. All right, Tyler, <laughs> you're always the one that catches people on your uh, or catch, catches yourself on giving the explanation, so you can go first if you okay. have to, if you feel like you have to give any explanations for your picks. I mean, I'll say for um, Rhett that. I've always loved his play style, like, from StarCraft 1. I just love, like, when he wins. It's so satisfying for me to watch Rhett win. I'm like, yeah, that's how you play StarCraft. Uh, Rhett has Naniwa. the best game face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Naniwa. I mean, he, he has some creativity, but he also, like, can play so solid. And I just like watching him to be like, if, I'm ever, if I ever lose my like bearings in a matchup, I'm just like, okay, I'll just watch some Naniwa games. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be like the most solid play ever. And I'll be like, okay, I'll I'll build off of that. Uh, Puma, I mean, same re Puma and ST, same reasons, you know, the, the yeah. obvious reasons that Dan talks about. Just the very solid play, intelligent play. Who was my other guy? What was the last guy I said? I don't oh, know. That's one that you struggled with, so I don't. Didn't you say you said MC was the last one? Oh yeah, yeah. MC, MC, the controversial one. I mean, because. <laughs> It used to be he, like, I'd, I thought he was very all in and he was. and But I, I just have to say, maybe not strategically, I like watching him more just entertainment value. I like watching him go for something. I mean, I think it's entertaining to watch him all in. I just, I got to call him out and say it's risky when it's risky. Um, 
And then, I mean, obviously, NASL finals, like, that's a guy you got to watch. Did anyone say Kiwi cocky? No. no, but I was thinking about it. Josh, is that your ferret going crazy? <laughs> Sounds like yeah. they're brushing their teeth. He had an itch. <laughs> yeah, he was. He definitely had an itch. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I feel like everyone else said players that really don't need a a reason for it. I don't. I, I think I have to explain my uh, my Tyler answer because okay. uh, I think not enough people actually watch okay. him in his stream. Um, you know, he's uh, Tyler is a player that is actually smarter than most of these other players, and it's really interesting to watch what he comes up with because uh, he doesn't actually custom as much as other people. A lot of what his play is is things that he he's like, he's the most introspective player I've ever seen Matt talk to. So a lot of this stuff is just him figuring it out in his head. And I don't think anyone else figures stuff out in their head as well as him. And it's really fun to watch that. And, he, and like my favorite quote ever was him making fun of, I don't know, maybe you were making fun of TLO or something, but it was something about, like, you can be creative, but I will crush it under the iron fist of my conservative play. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was Drone, man, Ariador. Oh, from, there you uh, go, man. That's TSL 2, I think. Yeah, no, that's uh, <laughs> right there. That yeah. that sums up my love of StarCraft. I mean, so great player to watch. Two things left. Uh, we got to grade each tournament, <laughs> and then uh, we got to do like has S- SCT lived up. So tournament grades. Um, I wonder how we can do this quickly. Um, I guess we'll just go around, and I'll just ask each person each league once. Uh, so, Artosis, MLG, A being best, F being the worst. Where are they at? Uh, a. All right, Tyler, IPL. Oh, like B plus. I get NASL, it's B minus. GSL, Leah. A. Uh, Artosis, you get uh, TSL. Uh, I'll go with B plus. And Tyler, you get IM. <laughs> I don't think I've even watched them. <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking. Like, t- 100% disclosure, I actually forgot to put them in here until like an hour after I made these show notes because it's, they haven't had a tournament since the world finals in like a while you should have dream hack oh yeah i forgot about okay i forgot dream hack so i mean i guess to me that's an a and home story cup too but home story cups not i am yeah i I guess leah you get home story then rate it uh i'd say a minus trying to think is that every single league when when is the next i am by the way their qualifier started right yeah Idra and Select are North America. I don't know any of the other qualifiers for that, though. Um, that's something to talk about for the next show. Um, does anyone not agree with someone else's grade? What did IM end up getting? Tyler just g- didn't give an answer because he didn't watch them. <laughs> I feel I like they're like that. Watched, I think it deserves a grade at least. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I feel like it's probably in the B like B plus. I would I'd, B plus is what yeah. I would say. Yeah. I am really good, man. Their live yeah. events are like insanely good. It's yeah, yeah. Carmack I, I feel like we have what he does. Korean zone white dude. That was I am, wasn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I feel like we haven't <laughs> I met seen Carmack. Him in a while. He's awesome. So maybe that's why it's not like fresh in people's mind. Um, all right, last one, and this one you have to give a long answer. Has SC two lived up to your expectations since the launch of the game, Artosis? Yes. You can give a long answer. <laughs> it's oh, like it's a like one time he can and I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, you know, I've waited for StarCraft 2 since like 04 ish. There's like recorded footage of me saying I was waiting for it back then, so I'm not just talking shit. Um, so I've been very excited for it, and I hoped that it would be similarly competitive, which I feel that it is, and it will become. It's still very young, of course, but no one comes even anywhere close to playing it perfect which is just great to see. Uh, the balance recently has been really nice, uh, and we're really starting to figure stuff out because there's nothing glaringly imbalanced. Um, I hoped that it would have a much bigger tournament scene and support at least you know a few foreign pro gamers, which StarCraft 1 really didn't. <laughs> and I tell you, it's like way beyond my expectations in that. I can't actually believe how big this game is. I 
didn't know there was this many smart people in the world that would watch StarCraft. So uh, it's it absolutely, it has lived up to and surpassed my expectations. Tyler? Uh, well, technically, no, it hasn't lived up to all my expectations, but others it has surpassed. I mean, I'd sum it up by saying you can't get everything that you want, but you get what you need. Got that from a song you might have heard of. <laughs> uh, no, but like the, the essentials, like Dan just said, I mean, game balance uh, and skill ceiling, they're good. Balance is pretty good. Skill ceiling is high. No one's playing anywhere near perfectly. Got a lot of room to improve for everyone. And the competitive scene is just blown away my expectations, just like Dan said. Like, I didn't expect this many tournaments uh, outside of Korea. And even inside of Korea, it's been flourishing uh, well, which I wasn't sure was going to happen because, you know, yeah. StarCraft 1 is pretty strong there. But GOM TV, GSL, they've done a great job. So obviously, like, features... You know, the LAN problems has caused a lot of problems for tournaments and the latency problems and, um, you know, Battle.net 2.0 hasn't, you know, if you asked me a couple of years ago, you know, before I heard anything about StarCraft 2, how awesome will the online experience of StarCraft 2 be? <laughs> I would have, like, been, oh, it's going to be amazing, Blizzard polishes everything and they're going to have a million features and all the new technology that we didn't have for StarCraft 1. It's going to be so cool. It hasn't really been that, but that's all kind of extra stuff. The essentials have been there and it's been awesome. So, yeah. Um, I remember back right before I started this podcast, Slasher, uh, Live on 3 slash MLG fame, was talking to me and... <laughs> At the time, I, I feel like esports was definitely on the decline in the fact that it wasn't really going to go anywhere with the current games that it had to fuel it. And then right when StarCraft II was kind of announced and the beta happened and everything like that, I, I said to Slasher, and he said to me as well, like, this is the thing that's going to make esports big in the world. And I think in, in that regard, it's definitely lived up to it. Um, and if, if you would have told me that we'd have all the leagues that we just mentioned like right before this, I probably wouldn't have believed you because it's actually insane that people like IGN are coming in. Um, mm. The NASL even exists is ridiculous because, I mean, that's not funded by a, like a huge corporation that we know of, at least. Uh, TSL is awesome. MLG, obviously. Um, at the time, I didn't know if MLG was going to pick up StarCraft too. That was kind of something that was still up in the air. So uh, I would say, yeah, it's definitely lived up to the expectations, uh, at least my expectations. So, Leah. Yeah, um, I mean, I definitely didn't follow the StarCraft 1 scene as closely as you all did, but I'm a huge Blizzard fan, and in that respect, I definitely think that it lived up to my expectations of just being an excellent um, both single-player and multiplayer game, and I think that it it really did surpass what everyone, uh, what our most people thought it was going to do, and it's really elevated esports to an entirely new level with all the leagues that you mentioned, and you know the prize pools are only getting bigger, and so many more people are investing in StarCraft, and like you know all these new teams are emerging, um, and I think that it it really lived up to my expectations, and I think that it's only going to do so much better in the future and go on to you know add all these new features that we want to add like hopefully one day LAN and the replays and I think that even though it takes them a really long time Blizzard does listen to what fans have to say about their game and they're they're trying to make it the best it can possibly be and the best esports title that it can be so I I think that they've done a, a very good job this year for the first year yeah, it's actually insane to think that this is only the first year in this many leagues. Are still going. Hopefully mm -hmm. a year from now we'll be saying double the amount of leagues or everyone's prize pool is just going to go up exponentially. But Yeah. Uh, we got user questions. Go to twitter.com slash itmejp. Submit a question there uh, at itmejp. Before we get on to that, uh, we'll do shout-outs. Um, I'll just start off. Everyone of us except for Dan, who's not going to be at MLG next week, uh, mm -hmm. come up, say hi to us. 
just it's mm. awesome meeting fans. I mean, I think Control always said that best. So just go listen to a podcast with him on it and <laughs> see what he said at the end. Come say hi to us. It's awesome meeting you guys. Um, and the reason that we're not going to have State of the Game next week is I'm actually traveling to a shoot this weekend for the Ultimate Gamer House because someone in the StarCraft II community who still does not know it yet actually won. So I get to go decorate at some nerd's house for the Ultimate Gamer <laughs> House. If you don't know what that is, Google it. Uh, I think there's one episode up from this season, and we have all of last season as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, and that's all I got. Art- Artosis, you got some shout-outs? Of course, uh, Six Shacks Gaming, the team I'm on. Uh, thank you to them, of course, and my sponsor. Uh, check out my Facebook. I'm doing a little bit more with that now. It's forward slash Artosis on that Facebook site that a lot of you probably use. Of course, my Twitter forward slash artosis on that uh, my youtube forward slash artosis tv of course the handsome nerd.com has got awesome t-shirts been putting up some new ones man i'm cool. really proud of some of the ones Shut we have right shirt. now actually yeah i have a sick shirt right this now. one's this. not even on sale yet man no this one is now oh, it is? look at that it's pro force fields that is how mc does his force fields so i mean i i like some of our shirts we have up there i wear them very proudly of course, check me out, gomtv.net. There's going to be sick matches tonight with me and Tasteless Casting. And uh, if you don't watch it, you're ruining esports. <laughs> you're killing esports. Fuck that term, man. <laughs> 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 like right with Tasteless with that term, man. When he went off on it the other night, that was hilarious. Uh, Tyler, shout outs? Uh, Team Liquid. Uh, we got great sponsors, the Little App Factory. Uh, go to the littleappfactory.com. Uh, they make some. Pretty nice programs for your convenience, so check them out. Mm-hmm. And we got Razor. You should go to TeamLiquidPro.com. That's our website. You can follow all of us. There's a lot of nice features on that site for following all your favorite Team Liquid Pro players. And uh, what else am I missing? Uh, you should go to Justin TV slash Liquid Tyler. You should follow me on Twitter. Uh, think I'm good. I want to mm-hmm. say go uh, go to Team Liquid and check out Rich's programs that he's put out. Oh Saint yeah, Switcher is actually awesome for anyone that streams yeah. StarCraft Two regularly. Um, basically, what it does is when you go in game, it'll pop up in game, and when it comes out, it'll go to another scene. So you can just put up like a a JPEG or something. That way, no one ever sees shit on your desktop and stuff like that. Um, then what was the other one? Oh, also the, the replay sinker that that Rich oh, built. Yeah. That's actually awesome. I had the privilege of using that the other week in a tournament. So uh, go check that stuff out. Leah, you got some shout-outs? Important questions. Um, I just want to shout-out to all my Twitter followers. Thanks, and especially to my two mods on my channel, uh, Jufro and Mordford. You guys are awesome. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, wait, got- dude. I got one. Go ahead. No, no, you can finish. No, I think... Yeah, I'm pretty much done. Okay. I did an awesome little video with Stride Last Longer. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention Stride altogether. (laughs) This is like terrible. MLG's coming up, dude. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I I knew I was forgetting something. I was like, oh, it's Stride. Uh, Yeah, the Stride guys are awesome. So, true Stride gum. And check out this video I made. You got to go to mlg.tv yeah mlg.tv <laughs> and you'll find the last longer program we're going to be making more videos and i watch uh i think it was a pvt yeah it was a pvt and i give advice and stuff yeah on how to get better i am um, just did a video three videos with Drewby on g4tv.com um focusing on terran matchups so you guys if you want yeah. I'm, I'm so, laughing at Artosis, sorry. I know, he's making funny faces. <laughs> <laughs> my nose no. itches, but I didn't want to yeah. be like... So I was I've going, been itching my channel. No, 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 but uh, yeah, if you guys want to check those out on G4TV.com, that's the esports stuff we did last week. All right, so. we got some questions. Artosis, first one's for you from Brandon. He wants to know, since you are a Magic the Gathering pro, are you ever going to play Magic the Gathering online? Uh, probably not. I don't have time. Um, and of course, it costs a lot of money as well. Uh, it's probably like the most expensive yeah, it, thing just, to go pro at, isn't it? Those cards are expensive, yeah. It's man. it. 
it takes a while to build up enough that you can trade into everything you need when new sets come out. So it's it's expensive. I sold off a lot of my really expensive cards, and I always thought that like when I made the decision to do StarCraft instead of Magic, because uh, I was basically like, uh, well, I was really good at StarCraft One and USA, obviously. Uh, but it was like, well, I don't have enough time for both these, just as I was about to join the Pro Tour. And uh, so I, I always thought that I'd go back to Magic eventually, but uh, the more time I spend with StarCraft, the more I like it. So I don't know if I'll ever return, unfortunately. I say good, but uh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> it's I'm a great just game. Greedy. Sick game. Um, Michael asks, what is the next big area of job growth in the esports for those of us not good enough to play professionally or cast? Tyler, I gotta throw this one to you first. <laughs> I am an expert on these kinds of things. I know. I'm glad you asked. I know. <laughs> I don't even like, know if I mean You can't play, you can't cast. How do you get a job in esports? I think event coverage is a good way <clears throat> to start. Yep, you, you should be good at writing or producing. Actually yeah, I, think I think there's production. there's a pretty high uh yeah. high demand for like audio engineers. Yeah. <laughs> At NESL. <laughs> Just had to throw that in there. <laughs> 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 no, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, coverage. There's. I mean, there's a lot of know, places. But there's too. pretty good coverage, though, already. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't know. I'm, I feel like the coverage area is just so impossibly hard to break into with a site like Team Liquid that does its own coverage, but at the same time, they have a billion people on the forum doing it during a tournament live for you. Mm. So you can just open up the live report thread or whatever and go look yeah. at that. Um, I feel like if you can edit videos or have really good editing skills for things like that in post, that's probably one of the, at least in, in my day-to-day, -day, that's like the most sought-out thing. For, I'm trying to, it's just impossibly hard to find someone to do that. Um, Artos, do you have an answer for that? I, I think it's production is definitely where it's at. Uh, everything else is kind of foolish, and a lot of the jobs should go to people already in the industry, like as uh, players and stuff like that. So, for instance, if... I don't care really how good you are at writing. If you haven't followed the scene forever, like, I'd rather hire Tyler if he retires as a pro gamer as a writer. That's just... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's just a loyalty thing. Maybe that's just... I believe in more, but uh, I would definitely go with production type stuff. There's, like... Yeah. There's so much right now that's trying to get going, and some of it has great production, like IPL. Some of it has lesser production, so I think that's probably the best and easiest way to help out on streams and, you know, get involved in that way. Yeah. Someone ask Someone ask if they're going to see me play competitively, and I hope not, because that's actually, like, the worst thing ever. <laughs> um, Sundance, you said you have a question, but you didn't ask a question, so I don't know what to say. Uh, um... <laughs> Uh, Arto says, here's a question from Taryn for me and you. He says, what's a good way for someone who wants to start out as a caster to do so? Go ahead and take the reins. Okay. Um, in my personal opinion, I, I feel like you should know something about the game. There's like two ways to go about it. Actually know the game, which there's like, for full-time casters, what are there? Like three people, four, no, maybe, maybe five actual caster people that kind of know the game. But uh, if you don't know the game, don't try to pretend to know the game. I actually, like, I turn on streams every single morning, like, different ones, random ones, whatever. And half the time I end up going, ah, and I <laughs> mute it. Because <laughs> it's just people, like, pretending that they know things, but they have no idea. So uh, if you're not one of those people, if you're not willing to put in the time to actually become a professional level knowledge of the game, which it takes 